Hello and welcome back to the channel. In the previous lecture, we have seen all about the major differences and the similarities between graph databases, relational databases, as well as the NoSQL databases, and how graph databases are more suitable for certain kind of use cases. So in this lecture, let's keep this discussion ahead and let's discuss about data modeling with graphs and how we can convert our problem into a graph with different kinds of nodes and relationships as well as they will have some purpose in the graph and how we can get a meaningful insight out of those nodes and relationships. So without further any ado, let's get into it. So the first thing we need to discuss is what are our goals and what we need to achieve using the graphs. So that would be very important. So as you already know that we already communicate in graph. Let me explain you with a simple example. So as we saw in our previous lecture, we had some examples of a social network graph. So as you can see, we have a different users who are connected to each other with different relationships. We have the different relationships like friends, then married to, then boss of and so on. There are so many relationships between those users that forms natural social network graph and we can get meaningful insights like recommendation engine as well as fraud analytics by seeing if they share any PII values or whatever it is. It totally depends on what you need to achieve using the graph databases because you will ingest the data but the insights are more important because at the end of the day you need to provide a value to your business. So to do that graph modeling is a very early and the most crucial step in building the knowledge graph. So as we say that knowledge graph is very whiteboard friendly. So let me tell you with some simple example. So if you have a problem and your team is has started discussing around and finding the solution for that problem. So most of the team members will quickly go to the whiteboard, get the marker and start drawing the circles, having the different entities and then connect it using the lines and so on to get and provide a solution to that problem. So that is a simple graph that you can imagine because at the end of the day, these nodes, so these circles will represent a node and the lines that they have drawn between them will represent the relationship. So this is how you can build a graph. So as you can see with a simple example, we have a graph model, very simple graph model where we have different labels like person, the company A and the company B. So as you can see, we have uh, different properties in a person. So you can see that these properties with these properties, you can see a node as a one document. So if you know about the NoSQL databases like the MongoDB, we have a record. We don't have record. We have a document as a record. So record is present in the relational databases and the same we call it as a document in MongoDB. So MongoDB document contains different kinds of key value pairs, which has in this example, like name, age, function. Similarly, in the graph databases, our node person has different properties. So properties means the key value pairs. So we have name of that particular person, then the age, as well as the function, as well as we have the works in relationship between person to company A, which denotes that this particular person works in a company A. And as you can see, we have a works in relationship goes from person to company A. So that is the direction of that. And it also has some properties present in its relationship. So in Neo4j graph database, we can also store different properties in the relationship itself. And as you can see, the company A has different properties. So that is also a specific document present in our graph. And as you can see, company B is a client of company A. So which means that there is a relationship between company A and B and the direction is from company B to company A. And as you can see, client of also has some properties present. Okay, so now let's talk about the labeled property graph model. And we are going to see this throughout this tutorial. So what it is that it is made up of different nodes, relationships, properties, as well as the labels. So let's discuss this with some simple example. 
so as you can see we got a very small graph present so in our model we have different labels so label means you can relate it as a table name in a relational databases so labels will group all those nodes together so in this case person so we have different labels like person location accident car as well as the insurance so these all are the labels and we can have multiple nodes present for a particular label so we have person so person a b c all those nodes will have the same label so we can relate it as a documents so as you can see we got nodes and nodes contain some properties so nodes we can say it as a particular record as compared to the relational database as well as we can relate it to a document in a mongodb no sql database so it is like a document which contains different kinds of key value pairs so key value pair means it will have the name as key and the name of that particular person so the person will have different key value pairs like name as well as it could have like first name last name the occupation the salary etc etc so which will contain the attributes related to that particular person so similarly we will be having car so car has different brands as well as price tag to it and so other attributes related to a vehicle so those can be represented as a label in our graph so label will define a suitable or certain role in our graph and as you can see here the next point is nodes can be tagged to one or more labels this is very important so you may ask like we cannot put car label to a particular person no i am not talking about this example but let's take an example of actors directors and all the movie data set so in our movie data set a particular actor could also be a director right so many actors will be directors as well as producers and also they will be actors as well as they can have different roles in a particular movie so how you can relate this you cannot create duplicate nodes and give them different labels that will be mess up and you will be having duplicate data in our graph so let's say tom cruise has directed acted as well as produce one movie so you cannot create three tom cruise nodes that will not make any sense right so it will have different labels so the first thing is tom cruise is a person before an actor right so it will have the label of a person the first label then it will have the label of the actor then it will be a producer as well as the director so it will have different labels and it is very important to avoid these duplications in our graph this is a very simple example but as you go further and as per your use case it will make more sense so in my project we are leveraging graph databases to find a fraudulent activities in a credit card portfolio so we have different kinds of applications like credit card applications uil applications and the business cards so to distinguish them it has the application label but it also has business card label for a business card application credit card label for a credit card application to distinguish them and we have a different set of rules applied for those applications using the graph data science so to distinguish them labels will really help us to make our graph scalable because as we introduce different kinds of information having the different sorts of label to distinguish a particular record will really help us in the further implementations so that is very important also we have the relationships which connects the nodes and also it provides a structure to the graph so the relationships are really important in the graph database and that is the reason graph databases are so popular and they are so much faster than other relational databases as well as no sql databases so relationship has a certain direction it can't have no direction right it should have a specific direction so in this case we have a person which has a lives at as well as the works at relationship between the location so person and the location has two relationships and it is pointing from person to the location because that makes sense location cannot be at person person should live at location so that's why the relationship direction is from person to the location and 
relationships that are really makes our graph more readable so as you can see by seeing in this graph it is very simple for a beginner as well to understand what is happening in our graph database we have different kinds of nodes and we have different relationships and they really make sense so as you can see person lives at a certain location but also person has witnessed some accident and that accident occurs at that location so this is the way the graph is getting connected and we can have like 2 degrees 3 degrees as well as 10 degrees apart data which can provide a certain value and insight and many businesses can take certain important decisions so in the product recommendation cycle it is not very easy to recommend a product to a customer you need to check all the record like the order history of the customers as well as if that particular product has brought by some other users as well as other users preferences so you need to dig a little bit deeper into that graph and apply your algorithms to recommend a certain product for a particular person and it happens in a real time and that is the power of the graph so because of the graph embraces the relationships it provides the solution within seconds and also our last point is like nodes relationship can also have some properties so it is very beneficial because let's say we have a transactional data present in our graph so if a transaction happens to a certain timestamp then we can store that timestamp into that relationship so account has some transaction so has transaction and in the hash transaction relationship we can track those timestamp so this will enhance the richness of our graph we can have more metadata in our graph so that we can utilize that metadata or the extra information present in that relationship into the graph algorithm okay so the further step is also very important like refining our model using the questions so let's discuss it with some simple example so as you can see after we have just initially designed our graph we can refine it by answering some simple questions so it totally depends on what use case you have been working on whether it could be a social network graph or a product recommendation system or a fraud analytics or money laundering system it could be anything so in this case we have a social recommendation system so as you can see in this figure we can search for the pattern of immediate friends as well as the friends of friends so we have like the different customers and they have the friends relationship between them and as you can see this customer on the right hand side has bought some product it has some classification as well so customer has bought some product and product has a classification and the type is headphones so that particular customer has bought some headphones so that product has properties like the type which is in-ear headphones as well as the brand and the cost of that product it doesn't matter so to solve our issue we can ignore that the immediate purchases of a customer so let's say if i bought something from amazon then i can ignore it it is not like a recommendation system in recommendation system if my friend or friend has bought something and I also search for that term then it will recommend that particular product which that friend of friend of mine has brought so that is how you need to refine your graph so that you can get some meaningful insight out of it and it will happen eventually so in the agile development as per the business requirement the new data and the attributes will come and your use case will change a bit so you have to refine that model by answering some simple questions because what you need to achieve is the most important thing while modeling your graph database. So when we refine our model then it will have different kinds of labels as well as numerous relationships in our graph. It will not be limited to this kind of limited information it will have a different customers it will have like subscription so if like particular customer has a amazon prime subscription then also the friend of friend or the immediate friend of that particular person will also get a recommendation to buy a prime subscription so for example in the netflix recommendation engine let's say if i saw some movie and i like a particular genre of the movies and also we have a particular person also likes movies from that particular genre 
and if i saw some new movie then that particular person will get recommended with the same movie because i saw that movie and that recommendation system will predict that that particular person can also like that movie so this is how the recommendation system works so this is a pretty huge graph because netflix has millions of users and millions of users has a uh, millions of nodes so let's imagine how big that graph will be and how that recommendation system has to perform to give you the recommended movie within a second so that is the power of the graph and you have to also optimize that graph so in the next lecture we are going to talk about the cipher query language which is also very similar to sql but sql is used for the relational databases to fetch the particular data and do some analytics so similarly cipher query language is used for the graph databases so i hope you like this lecture in this lecture we have seen all about what is a graph data model and how we need to build our graph ontology and also refine it on the way by asking simple question according to your use cases okay so this is not the end our next lecture is totally focused on querying graphs and we will have a introduction to cipher and its syntax so stay tuned and subscribe to the channel